So, as I'm sure everybody out there has already heard, something completely horrendous happened in Texas very recently. And I'm not making this video to really talk about the facts of what did or didn't happen. Um, I don't know exactly. Um, and to even consider the possibility that the official story that the media is reporting isn't accurate requires an audience to be able to consider the possibility of really disturbing things that most people can't consider. Um, and so this video isn't even about that. I mean, there's MK Ultra was a real thing. It's not a conspiracy theory. It was declassified. It was something agents of the US government actually did profoundly evil. Most of it was shredded, but a bunch of it was declassified. We know that happened. Um, but most people do not want to consider the possibility of anything like that ever being involved in something this this horrible. So that discussion is almost impossible to have with most people. And you know, Operation Northwoods, that was not a conspiracy theory. That was a conspiracy. It's declassified. You can look it up. I highly suggest that everyone does. Um, when you understand what governments have done and are capable of, then you can have the discussion, was this what it appeared or was it something else? But I'm not even here to, to have that discussion. I'm here to talk about the principles involved, given whatever you believe happened down in Texas. Because if you believe uh, it was, you know, some kid who was mentally unbalanced who, for whatever reason, the motive still seems to be a mystery. There's a bunch of things about the story that are weird, like why did he do it? Where did he get the guns and things like that? But if you accept, well, some kid was just unstable and killed a bunch of children, how you respond to that is, of course, going to be based on what you think happened. But it also depends upon the principles you have and the viewpoint you have and the mentality you have. And that's what I want to talk about um, today not arguing over the factual thing because that's most people aren't ready for that discussion and it doesn't get anywhere anyway. So you get to decide what you think happened down there and this video is going to be talking about how you view it and respond to it. Now, I should start off by saying that it's very difficult to remain rational and calm and principled when talking about something so heinous. Little children getting murdered that's about as bad as you can get. And so it's completely understandable for people to be outraged and, and emotional and, and desperate and frustrated and uh, just every negative emotion you can think of. Um, that's completely understandable, but principles don't change. And reality doesn't change based on how righteously infuriated you are. And uh, that's not to say you shouldn't be righteously infuriated. But if we can't think in terms of principles and what to do next, then we just do stupid things. So for all the people saying, we have to do something, and this happens every time there's a something horrible happens. We have to do something. I can totally sympathize with people saying that. Like something so horrible, we need this to not happen. We need this sort of thing to not happen. Well, when you're pushing to do something, two things you need to consider if you're a rational, decent human being is, is that something actually useful? And is that something actually moral? Because if it isn't both, don't do it, no matter how upset you are. If it's not useful and moral, don't do it. Even if something dreadfully horrible happened, even if you don't know what else to do about it. I'll use sort of an extreme example as an analogy. Uh, the vast majority of mass shootings are committed by young men. That's pretty damn indisputable if you look at the data. So somebody might say, we have to do something. So we should lock up all men between the ages of 15 and 25 just in case. Now, would that reduce mass shootings? Probably. It probably would. Is it moral and justified? No, it's utterly insane. And if we're so desperate and frustrated and, and infuriated 
that we don't bother to actually examine what works and what's moral, then we're just going to make things worse. We're going to do things that either don't work, uh, are counterproductive because they don't actually accomplish anything because we're so desperate to do something, we don't bother to check whether it helps. Or we're going to commit a different evil in response to this other evil because we really need to and it's desperate and we have to do it. So I want to talk in terms of people's mentality um, because you very much see very different mindsets and viewpoints of the world when something like this happens. Um, and I'm just going to be blunt. You see a lot of people respond like little children and you see some people respond like grownups. And what I mean by that is if something horrible happens, whatever it is, and you think we need big daddy government or big mommy government to make sure this doesn't happen again. And you think not in terms of what can I do? What can my neighbor do? What can the people I know do? What can we, the adults do to make this not happen? But you instead you think in terms of what can we beg authority to do to make this not happen? You're thinking like a little child. You're not thinking like a grown-up. And uh, let me use this as an example. If there, if there, if I was at some, you know, some get together somewhere and there's some drunkard waving a loaded shotgun around, I would absolutely feel justified in tackling him and taking the gun away. Let's say he's not even threatening anybody. He, he's not even saying, I'm going to kill you, but his finger's on the trigger and he's swaying around and swinging it around and endangering everybody, not even maliciously, but just endangering everybody. In that case, I would personally institute and impose gun control, if you want to call it that. That individual, if he's in the process of endangering other human beings, then I think it would be perfectly justified for me or anybody else to remove that danger to protect his potential victims because it's, it's an imminent clear threat. Now, if he's actually threatening people, like he's actually like, I, I don't just mean accidentally, I mean intentionally threatening to kill people or in the process of shooting people, I would absolutely feel justified in using any degree of force to stop him, including deadly force, including shooting him myself. And if anybody else did that, I would think they were justified in doing so. If that's, if that's what was required to stop somebody from doing that, that's fine. There is a fundamental difference in mindset between me, let's say I'm at a party somewhere and some for some strange reason, some guy with a gun is staggering around. He's all drunk and swinging a gun around. And I go, I'm going to tackle him and take his gun away because that's a pretty extreme situation. And I would feel justified on my own or with somebody else or watching somebody else do it, disarming that guy because he's obviously a threat to people. He's, he's not just being somebody who happens to own a firearm. He's somebody who's in the process of in, actively endangering everybody else. Now, imagine the difference of mindset between I'm at this place and this guy is obviously an imminent threat, so it's time to, to tackle him and take his gun. Or if he's actually trying to kill people, I may just shoot him. I may not bother wasting time risking my life to preserve him. I may shoot him to make sure he doesn't shoot anybody else. There's a big difference between that, which is completely justified and completely consistent. Like, I think it would be justified if I did it or somebody else did it. Somebody with or without a badge, like you don't need special authority to stop a psycho from killing people. But imagine if I went into a party somewhere and there's people, you know, having a good time. Every, you know, there's no psycho with a gun. And I say, okay, wait, everybody stop. Nobody in here is allowed to have a firearm unless you come to me and convince me that you should be allowed to have one. That is a fundamentally different attitude and it's insanely arrogant and downright immoral if I'm saying, I'm going to forcibly disarm anybody unless I decide that you are ready to have a firearm. That is ridiculous and that's a fundamentally different viewpoint. 
Well, that's the difference is people who think like grownups, if there's somebody who's actually a threat, they'll say, yeah, disarm that person. If they're, whether it's negligent endangerment, like to a severe degree, or actually threatening or trying to kill people. Yeah, that person who's doing that now deserves force used against them to stop them. But to say, nobody's allowed to do this unless I deem them responsible enough. The arrogance of that. And that is what you get from people who think like children. Well, government should decide who's allowed to have a gun. And what if they decide nobody is? What do you think happens? They don't just say you're not allowed to and everybody goes, oh, okay. They enforce it. When government does a law, people who subscribe to my channel already understand this, every law is a threat of violence, including deadly violence. You will do this or you will not do that. And if we catch you, we will send men with guns to arrest you. Every gun control uh, law is a threat of deadly force, ironically, by way of men with guns. If you're not legally allowed to have whatever the politicians said you're not legally allowed to have, even if you didn't threaten or harm anybody, that means if they catch you, they will send men with guns to point guns at you and then ironically take your gun and put you in a cage, maybe for a long time. And all the people who are advocating that are advocating gun violence, but they don't recognize it as such because they think like little children. They think uh, authority should make sure that only the good people have. Well, how do you think that happens? We need a special group of human beings that have special rights and they get to rule us all. And we need their permission to have a gun or build a deck or grow a garden or do anything. That is the mindset of a child. And unfortunately, a lot of Americans think that way. We should make sure government only lets people do, as if the people in government are somehow magically, perfectly wise and moral when they're the exact opposite. They're the worst people in the world. And by now, most people know that. But just that difference of mentality of it is up to me to fix my, what might be wrong. If there's a flood and my neighbors are floating away, well, I'm sorry, authority's not here. No, I'm going to try to save them. And if I'm somewhere where some psycho with a gun starts shooting people, I'm not going to dial 911. If I'm carrying, which I do pretty often, I'm going to shoot the person because I'm a grown up and I accept it as my responsibility to do that sort of people is all we have and waiting around for people with badges to do it is just tactically stupid. If I'm there with a gun, why would I call somebody else in the case of an active shooter happening? Now, I can't do this video without mentioning not just the cowardice, but the profound evil. And I do not use that word lightly. The profound evil committed by everyone with a badge at that scene. All of them, every single one of them are cowards and criminals. Now, if you swagger around me, cow, here's my badge, I protect and serve, and I'm the one you're going to call when you're in trouble, and then you hide outside while little children are being murdered by a teenager, you're a fucking coward. The thing is, people are allowed to be fucking cowards. Like, don't pretend you're brave. The uniform doesn't make you brave. The badge doesn't make you brave. Usually it makes you irresponsible, power-happy coward. Being a coward wasn't nearly the worst of what they did. I mean, that's pretty bad. And those of us who understand what law enforcement really is weren't very surprised because that happens almost every time there's an there's a active shooter situation. The cops hide outside because they're fucking cowards. And they even said in a, in a press conference, well, they didn't go in because they were afraid of getting shot. Okay. Well, thanks for showing the world what you are. You're not brave heroes. You're spineless cowards. But okay, so you're spineless cowards. Then along come some parents. First of all, the parents are standing outside while this is going on and urging the police, go in, do something, go stop him. 
He's murdering little children. Stop him. And they fucking don't. They hide outside because they're fucking cowards. And by the way, you're forced to pay for them to stand outside. Because they're paid with your taxes and they pretend that their job is to protect and serve. No, it's not. They serve the ruling class. They don't give a shit if you're getting killed. If your little children are being murdered, they don't care. As evidenced by the fact that they stand outside like fucking cowards. Now, I will make an exception. There was a border patrol agent who I believe was parent, uh, father of one of the, the kids in there. Now, in case you didn't know this, border patrol does not have jurisdiction over a school shooting. So he wasn't acting as a border patrol agent. He was acting as a brave guy who went in and shot the psycho and saved his kid and saved a bunch of other kids. That wasn't him. He wasn't protecting the border. He was being a decent and brave human being. Good for you. Now, I think his job is inherently immoral, but that's completely aside the point of what happened there. I, I think it's freaking awesome that he dared to do that while all those badge-wearing, spineless wusses were waiting outside, including apparently the U.S. Marshals and the local police. A bunch of pansies were waiting outside. And that guy, for whatever reason, you know, was able to borrow a gun and go in and stop it. According to the, you know, the versions of the story I heard. Good for him. Out frickin' standing. That's what it means to be a grown-up. I'm not going to dial 911 and hide in a corner somewhere. There's little children being terrorized and murdered. You go in and you fucking stop it. I don't care if you have a badge or not. I don't care if you have a law or not. If you imagine yourself to be authority or not. You fucking stop it if you're a responsible human being. Now... There's a lot of people who can't fathom that possibility. They're scared of firearms. And some of them want to imagine that there's virtue in them being helpless and disarmed. Well, I'm above violence. No, you're not. You're a coward because you're going to call somebody else to save your butt if somebody's attacking you. And so the people who somehow think they're superior because they act like children and don't take upon themselves the responsibility to defend themselves and their family and even complete strangers. The irony that they look down on those of us who own firearms and often carry firearms so that we can be there to stop something like that from happening. It's just so ironic that people who think like little children show nothing but scorn and contempt for those of us who think like grown-ups. It's my job just as much as anybody else's to protect the people around me if some psycho starts attacking innocents. Oh, by the way, I can't, I can't leave out the other amazing hero, which is the mother who showed up and was handcuffed by the police and apparently got convinced them to, to take the handcuffs off. She jumped a fence and ran inside and rescued her little kids from a psycho. That is bravery. That is courage. Way to frickin' go. She wasn't even armed. And she was still like, I'm not just going to sit out here. I'm going to do something because I'm a grown-up and somebody has to do something. And these badge-wearing pansies aren't doing shit. But that brings me to the worst part. It wasn't they weren't doing anything. They were literally accomplices to murder. If I was standing outside somewhere and somebody's getting murdered inside and somebody else says, I'm going to go in and stop them. And I tackle him and I tase him and I handcuff him to stop him from protecting his child from being murdered. I would be a charged with accomplice to murder. And rightly so. All of those cops were literally accomplices to murder because they didn't just do nothing. They harassed and tased and tackled the parents who, first of all, wanted them to go in and stop them and then wanted to go in themselves. And the cops who forcibly stopped them from doing that 
are just fucking evil. They're not just cowards. They're fucking evil. Really? You make that your power trip? Well, at least I'm in charge of the parents out here and I can stop them from saving their little children. You evil shits. If you were just cowards, I would make fun of you and that's enough. But you are evil shits and it's every fucking one of them that was there. Because the ones that may not have personally tackled and tased and handcuffed parents trying to go in, they didn't do a goddamn thing when their fellow fascist pigs were doing that to parents trying to save their children. The state isn't just cowardly, it's fucking evil. And you got to see it in at least the official story of what happened there. It's infuriating and I'm not going to be gentle about it because what those cops did was way beyond cowardly. Way beyond cowardly. It was fucking evil. And if one of the parents trying to go in to save their child was confronted by a cop and said, I'm not going to let you go in. If he had shot that fucking cop in the head, that would absolutely have been justified. The cop was trying to stop him from saving his child from a murderer. And if what it took to get past that cop was putting a bullet in his head, then he would fucking deserve it because he was an accomplice to murder. All of them were. Everybody there with a badge was an accomplice to murder. They just stood outside for 40 minutes to an hour. The reports are different. Do you have any fucking idea how long 40 minutes is in that situation? I was tempted to make this video 40 minutes long of me just saying, yeah, they're still sitting there being terrorized. Uh, another one got shot. 40 minutes is beyond forever in that situation. And not only did they just sit outside, but they tackled and tased and stopped the parents from protecting their own children. And the mother who disobeyed them and jumped the fence and went in to save their kids, holy crap. That is a hero. That is what a hero looks like. And the off-duty border patrol agent who's like, screw this, I'm going in. I know there's a guy in there with a gun, but he's killing children and I'm not going to fucking wait to see what happens. I'm going to stop him. That is a hero. The fact that he had a badge, I don't care. He wasn't even on duty. He wasn't doing his job. That's not the border. That human being who chose to actually put himself in harm's way to protect, protect little kids, that's a hero. That's what a hero looks like. The cops who tried to stop them, that's what an evil piece of shit looks like. Now, there can be a lot of discussion about, you know, mental health issues. Um, and I, I can't even begin the discussion about because most people are not ready to hear the discussion about the fact that even though it's kind of accepted in this culture that of course we institutionalize all our children for years and turn them over to this, like most people are not ready to question that. They think, well, how can we keep it safe? Don't send them to school. Don't have schools. Don't have what is essentially a prison which trains people to feel isolated, to separate into cliques, to feel bitter, to feel violent, violent, to get bullied. And half the stories say, well, he was bullied, the shooter, and half the stories say he was the bully. And maybe both are true, maybe neither are true, I don't know. But putting kids into school in that setting, it's going to do that. And most people aren't ready to have that discussion. Uh, for those of you who are, read the works of John Taylor Gatto, who was New York State and New York City Teacher of the Year because he figured out what the, the education system actually does. But that's a, that's a different topic. So people can talk about mental health, um, and we should. And keeping on the lookout for, like, is somebody acting like they're actually a danger to other people? And that's, that's a discussion that should be had. But the people who jump to the concept of gun control think like little children. Because they don't think in terms of, 
when an individual does something nasty or it looks like he might, what do we do about that? They think in terms of how do we make sure nobody has the capacity to do this? That's both immoral and on a practical basis, just insane. It's ridiculous. If somebody wants to kill you, if somebody wants to kill me, they're probably going to. It's pretty easy. The idea that you can make a world where that's difficult is utterly absurd. Now, the idea you make a world where that's less likely because, you know, the thing, you know, don't torture children in school, um, keep an eye out for when they actually have problems, um, you know, have parents actually paying attention to what their kids are doing, you know, all this stuff. And then on top of that, again, there's the discussion of, well, how much of this story actually made sense? Like, why did the cops stand there while he was outside for 12 minutes, apparently, reloading and stuff after they had had a shootout and he crashed his truck into a ditch? Like, the story is really damn weird. But again, without disputing the facts, if your response is, well, I think government needs to control everybody because of what that person did, you're thinking like a child. And what you're advocating is not rational and it's not moral. It doesn't work, first of all. And it's completely immoral to say, all right, from now on, anybody who wants a firearm, they need to come ask my permission. Because that's essentially what you're saying if you advocate gun control. You say, oh no, they need to ask government's permission. So the people you elect, who you don't even know, I sure as hell don't trust, regardless of who they are, left or right, but that difference in mindset is fundamental. If you come from a place of what can we, the normal people, do to make this less likely and to deal with it if it happens again with any problem, shooting, a flood, or anything else, that's rational. That's the way grown-ups think. But if it's how can we make authority make the world a place that this can't happen, they can't. A, it's utterly impossible, and B, it's immoral to try because every single way they try will consist of threatening and initiate, initiating violence against lots and lots and lots of people who haven't threatened or harmed anyone. So for all the people who jump to, this is why we need gun control, I want you to, to answer, and, and I'll end with this, I want you to answer a very specific, basic question for me. And I want you to answer in a way that's very literal and specific. No vague euphemisms. Say what you actually think. I own an AR-15. Never threatened anyone. Never harmed anyone. I don't leave it lying around so kids can get it. Like, it's perfectly safe. If there ever comes a time when I need it, I'm going to have it. If... It ever comes to pass that government and politicians say, you're not allowed to have that, I'm going to have it anyway. I might hide it, I might lie about it, whatever, but I'm not giving it up. Now, if you're one of the people who advocate that, and you can say whatever you want about, well, you don't need a blah, blah, blah. Okay, that's fine. You can believe whatever you want about that. Personally, I think the reason people should have um, military-style rifles is so they always outgun their own government. And by the way, that's why the Second Amendment was written. And that might scare you if you think like a child. The idea of, ah, we can't have the people more, more, you know, better armed than government agents. Okay, then come right out and say that you want government to be able to do anything it wants and the people shouldn't have the ability to resist. If that's your very childish view, then say so. But whatever you think about, oh, you don't need that, and we just need this, that, and the other thing. We need reasonable restrictions and waiting periods and background checks and whatever you think it is. Answer me this one question. And feel free to answer in the comments below or just answer it to yourself. If I, having never threatened or harmed anyone, decide I'm keeping my IR-15, I might hide it and lie about it and stuff, to the authorities even after government says it's illegal, which they haven't done yet, what do you personally advocate be done to me if I break that law that you want? What do you want to have happen to me? Do you want them to kick down their, my door and drag me away and cage me if they catch me? 
not because I threatened or harmed anyone, but because I possessed a thing without the permission of the holy ruling class. What do you want to have happen to me? And don't go into the weird evasions that people usually do of, well, there have to be consequences to the... the yeah, I know, but what consequences do you want to have happen? If you're one of the people who says, well, AR-15 should be illegal, only police should have them, because they do such a marvelous job protecting us with them, right? But if you're one of the people who believe that, what do you want to have happen to me if I disobey that law? Because I will absolutely disobey that law. Do you want them to send me a stern letter? Okay, I'm okay with that. Are we done? Or is there something else you want them to do to me if I disobey? If I say, no, I'm going to maintain my ability to defend my family and even complete strangers, including against psychos with badges and psychos without. What do you want to have happen to me? I almost never hear the people who think like little children being honest and precise about what they advocate. Because when I advocate the use of violence, I don't have to hide it under euphemisms. Like if somebody breaks into my house at two in the morning and I can't see them very well and they're wielding an ax, I'm going to shoot them. I'm going to aim a gun at them. I'm going to pull the trigger. I'm going to make a bullet go through them so they die. I don't have to talk about it like, well, I'm going to advocate a policy whereby there's a deterrent for... I'm going to kill them. I don't have to hide that. I don't have to pretend it's something other than what I advocate because I'm honest about what I advocate. So please return the favor and be honest if you're one of the people who advocate gun control, which is totally a euphemism in and of itself. What do you advocate be done to me? If you advocate that men with guns kick down my door and point machine guns in my face and drag me off and put me in a, in a cage, okay, then just say that. That's all I'm asking right now. Just say what it is that you actually literally advocate in the name of gun control or whatever laws you condone. Here's the punchline. If you advocate that government do things that you don't think you would be justified in doing yourself, you're a hypocrite and you think like a child. It's that simple. If you say, well, I would feel justified in stopping a murderer, so you know I would pay a security guard or a cop or something to do that. Okay, well, that's consistent. That makes sense. If you would feel justified, but maybe not you know, well-trained enough, maybe not able to tackle some psychos running around killing people, but you want somebody else to do it for you, okay, at least that, that makes sense. That's justified. But if you wouldn't personally come to my house with a gun, point it at my face, and cage me because I have a gun that you don't approve of. And I hope you could see the irony in that. If you wouldn't do that personally, then you're being an absolute hypocrite and a child to advocate that government and authority do that on your behalf. What happened in Texas was just freaking horrible. And unfortunately, there's no magic formula that makes it so freaking horrible things can't happen. There are some things we can do that actually work and are moral. That's what we need to focus on. Fully understanding that that doesn't make the world a place where bad people can't do bad things. You can prepare, you can train, you can do whatever, and yet bad people are still going to be able to do bad things. That's reality. And if we're so eager to do something because we're so righteously upset and infuriated, what we get is what you just got in Texas. You're not allowed under the law to carry a gun into a school, but he did. You're not allowed to murder a bunch of people, but he did. You're not allowed to not pay the salaries of the police. If you don't pay your taxes, they do nasty things to you. But that happened down there. And when the cops didn't do anything, waited around outside, you're not allowed to do anything about it. That's authority. And if you try to save your own kids and the thugs of the state tackle you and tase you and handcuff you, tough shit.
That's what you advocated. If you believe in government, it's what you voted for. Because you were thinking like a child. And you were thinking, if only we had this all-powerful, all-knowing, good, righteous authority to protect us. It's not how fucking reality works. Grow up. Stop making things worse. And this is true of Republicans and Democrats. Stop looking for authority to save your ass. Because they don't. They make it worse. And to even push for that shows that you haven't grown up yet. You're still hoping some superhero will fly down or some authority will show up and save the day. Be a grown up. Be the mom who said, screw this, I'm going to jump the fence and go get my kids out. Be her. Be the off-duty border patrol agent who said, screw this, I'm going to go in and stop this. I'm going to save my kid and I'm going to save the other kids. I don't care if I might die in the process. I have to do that. Be them. Not the fucking cowards with badges on the outside and not the people who think that only those fucking cowards should have guns. Grow the fuck up. This world is nasty, and it would be a hell of a lot less nasty if the well-intentioned people, and I assume you're well-intentioned, would grow the fuck up and stop expecting or asking authority to protect us, because they don't, ever. They're about their own power, and that's all. Their law enforcers are about making you obey the politicians. And that's all. They don't have to protect you. They suck at protecting you. They don't give a shit about you. You want to know how I know? Because cops will run into a school, get their own children out, and abandon all the other children. That's who your little child brain was hoping was going to save you from reality. Grow up and be one of the people who protect the innocent. Stop empowering psychopaths and thinking they're going to do it for you.